Right, Chair, we're live on YouTube now if you want to begin. Okay, thanks, Dan. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this virtual meeting of the Planning and Development Committee. Can I remind all participants that normal rules of procedure apply? For example, comments and questions need to be directed to the Chair. As we are meeting virtually, proceedings may take slightly longer, so your patience would be appreciated. As per our virtual meeting procedures, if questions have been received prior to the meeting, I will call upon the relevant member at the appropriate time to raise that question. If you are invited to speak, please state your name, be as specific as possible about which issue it is you are speaking to. Whilst members of the public can view this meeting via YouTube Live, live they will not be able to actively participate or comment on proceedings. As this meeting is being live streamed, can I remind all participants that their conflict should their conduct should reflect this. Any agents, applicants or objectors that wish to speak on a particular application have had the opportunity to inform planning section of today's meeting. I will invite those individuals to present their cases at the appropriate time in proceedings. Whilst holding the meeting remotely to reduce the likelihood of technical issues, these individuals have been asked to dial to the meeting by telephone. Please be advised there will be a time limit of five minutes for those who wish to speak in support of an application and five minutes for those who wish to speak in objection. For example, if more than one person wishes to speak in objection to an application, the time allocation of five minutes will be divided between those two speakers. There may also be ward councillors in attendance today who wish to speak. My name is John Hobson. I'm the chair of the committee today. Also in attendance are Paul Clark, Andy Glossop and Shelley Perman from Planning, Simon Thompson from Highways, Emma Loughran from Legal. We've got Chris Lund, Georgina Moa and Dan Johnson from Democratic Services. The other individuals you can see in attendance are councillors who are members of this committee they will make the decisions on the applications scheduled for today's meeting. Right, we'll make a start. Item agenda two, apologies for ab absence. Do we have anybody, Georgina? Um, no apologies have been received, Chair. Right, OK. Declarations from interest from members of the committee in respect of the items scheduled for today. Uh, I have one. It's on the... Uh, it's on the item three, the Rye Hill House, uh, simply because it's in my ward. Right, we don't have any minutes because... Sorry, Councillor Nugent, you got your hand up? Yes, Chair. I'm not sure that makes any difference, but I'm a, a councillor of one of the wards being spoken about today. Okay? Yes, you are, yeah. yeah. Thank okay. you, John. Thank you, Chair. Right. Um, we don't have any minutes today because our last meeting was only Friday. So we'll get the minutes of Friday's meeting and today's meeting when we come to our next meeting, which I think is first week in April, if I remember rightly. Right. Planning applications to be considered today. We've got three. We've got Ormsby Methodist Church. Land at Grow Hill and Rye Hill House. We'll take them in the order that they're there. So the first one is Ormsby Methodist Church. I shall hand over to uh, Andy to share his screen and present the information to the committee. And please, if you have any questions, wait till Andy's finished before you ask them. Thank you very much. Andy? Chair, I think Andy's on mute. Andy, I think you're on mute. Are you aware? I don't know whether he's dropped out, Chair. Oh. He's... This could be Paul's big moment, then he might have to take over.
Paul, could you possibly I take over? I will do. Is Andy still sharing his screen? Um, yes. Yeah, it looks like he's still sharing, but it looks like he's dropped out of the meeting. So um, no, I'll um, I'll take over. I'll try and share my screen because I've got it up as well. So um, you bear with me one moment. Right, members, are you able to see my screen? Yes, we can. Right. Okay. Thank you. So, the application before us, the first one today, is change the use of the Methodist Church um, or the Methodist Church High Street. Um, Paul, Paul, sorry to interrupt. We, no, we can we can hear you, but the, we can just see your desktop. Um, uh, we can't actually see the slides. Wrong one. Wrong one. There we go. Problem of having too many monitors. Uh, we'll get there eventually. Right. Uh, apologies again. I will start again, Chair. Okay. Um, proposal. The first proposal is for the change of use of the former Methodist, Orange Methodist Church, um, to a dance studio and community events. Uh, two. Um, it's a dance studio is classed as a town centre. Town centre use um, and as such, the, is the, the approach we adopt a sequential approach. We look first of all for a. Uh, a location in an identified centre um, and then we, um, sequentially next to centre and out of centre. The building is located off the high street, Pritchard Road. And as the site lies outside a local neighbourhood district and other centres, as defined within the local plan, there is a requirement of national and local policy for a sequential assessment to be undertaken by the applicant to ascertain whether there are any appropriate sites or buildings within the centre nearby which could accommodate proposed use. And only, as I stated, where it's demonstrated there are no reasonable, available, and suitable buildings or sites should this proposal be considered as a suitable location. The sequential test which has been submitted for the application considers the availability and suitability of other units within both the Ormsby High Street Local Centre and Lee Home Crescent Local Centre. These are the two closest centres to, to the site. It concludes there are no vacant units in either centre and that given the location of the application site on the fringe of the Ormsby High Street Local Centre, um, that the site is considered to be a sequentially preferable site for the, the use. The proposed use as well should not undermine the retail vitality and viability of the local centre and is considered to be a suitable location for, for what's being proposed. There are no material alterations to the exterior of the building of the of the uh, of the building which are proposed, and so no impacts on the, the visual character of the area. As the building was previously used as a church and could continue to do so without permission, it can or would have resulted in comings and goings by users of the site with noise and traffic movements associated with people attending the site. Why subjections have been received in relation to noise, disturbance and traffic, as these can already take place as a result of the building's use, they are considered to be unlikely to be notably different to what would otherwise occur um, with the um, current use of the building. Notwithstanding this, it is considered appropriate to reasonably control noise given the position of nearby residential properties. A noise impact assessment was requested has been submitted. It's concluded that providing amplified music is limited to a maximum of 85 decibels. The proposed use would be less than the pre-existing traffic noise in the area. The council's environmental health officer considered a noise report and requested further measurements to show that suggested noise levels would not have an adverse impact on nearby residents with the closest property abutting the rear boundary. The agents consider the agent considers, however, that due to the layout of the premises with the dark studio rooms towards the front of the site, that noise would not be excessive. Furthermore, it is noted there are no existing controls and noise from existing use, which would already occur where the building be brought back into use as a church. The current use is also limited in terms of its hours of operation and so could potentially create noise and disturbance outside what would be considered acceptable hours. Officers accept these points and consider that this proposal allows an opportunity to limit the extent of noise coming from the building 
and to limit the opening hours of the premises, thereby giving us greater control over potential disturbances than is currently the case. Conditions are therefore recommended to address these aspects. Concerns were raised regarding privacy to a side facing kitchen window at number four, Chapel Street. Chapel Close, apology which faces towards the parking area. At the time of making the initial site visits, there was a fence and some vegetation in place along the boundary. Although on a more recent visit, the vegetation has now been removed, as can be seen from the um, photograph before you now. Again, the key consideration is that this proposed use is likely to have similar traffic it movements that could be associated with existing church use. There's also the opportunity for the adjacent property owner to raise the fence height should they wish to, to achieve a higher level of screening. With regards to highways matters, concerns were raised regarding the movement of traffic and parking on Pritchard Road. Use of as a place of worship can result in a high level of worship as arriving at the site at the same time. With the proposed use, it is likely that classes will take place at varying times, thereby spreading the arrival and departure of vehicles across the, across the time the term the building is in use. So that this will have a lesser impact than existing use has the potential to have at the moment. The proposal should comply with the parking standards set out in Tees Valley Highway Design Guide, which requires that one parking space per 10 square metres of public space is provided. The applicant indicates a total of 175 square metres of public space within the building, which requires 18 spaces to be provided. The proposed site plan indicates parking for 14 vehicles, which falls short of the required standard. However, as there is an existing building and use of the site, consideration also needs to be taken of the current situation. The parking stand for places of worship is one space per six seats. There is no information provided for the capacity of the church, but based on size of the floor area, it is estimated that the parking alone for the existing church would be at least 25 spaces, indicating that this is greater than the need for the proposed use. A few of the parking requirements proposed use being less than that of the existing use, it would be difficult to justify refusal of planned permission based on lack of parking, as it will in theoretical terms be an improved situation. Four cycle parking spaces are indicated being provided. Um, comment was made that parking restrictions should be put in place to resolve parking issues in the area and to avoid access for emergency vehicles being blocked. This is a matter of consideration under highways legislation. The slides uh, I'm showing you now are just some street views of, of the area. Um, that's the, the proposed car parking associated with, with the hall. Internal layout of the hall. And there's the um, strip Pritchard Road outside of the, the application site. So in summary, the proposal has been assessed against local policy and guidance. It is considered that due to its location close to local centre, the proposed use is acceptable in principle and that the reuse of a vacant building that is close to local facilities represents a sustainable form of development. The proposal will not have any notable detrimental impacts on the character of the area, the amenity of nearby neighbours or the safe operation of the highway. All they, if all other issues raised will be considered, but, but do not justify refusal of planned permission. Uh, so, Chair, there have been three objections as already outlined. Concern, these re re relate primarily to concerns regard in relation to parking, lots of privacy, noise, access for emergency vehicles, highway safety, requests for yellow lines, and property already in use as a dance studio. Two of the conditions or, which are proposed on the site include um, limiting the hours of operation between nine hours, nine in the morning and nine into the evening, and also um, condition regarding noise mitigation, whereby if noise levels as a result of the use hereby approved when measured at the facade, facade at any of the dwellings whose boundaries of joint development site exceed five decibels above background noise, then further mitigation works will be required. That chair is all I want to say about the application. Um, I will stop sharing my screen and open up for questions. Thanks, Paul. Anybody have any questions for Paul? Anybody got their hands up? Councillor Garvey, I think you were first. Thanks, Chair. Paul, as, as the building 
it was previously owned, but I remember talk, I've, I've done several weddings there and, I, and I've talked to the administrator before it was sold as a church. Was there anything stopping the church hiring it out to a dance school and it just keeping that that sort of, you know, that situation going? And, and, and why why are we asking for planning to make it a dance school? Can you can you tell us the difference between that, please? Andy may step in and correct me if I get this wrong, but uh, my interpretation would be hiring out for events is almost like a one off um, in terms of that, whereas this is a permanent use. Um, you can do certain things um, time limited, probably 28 times a year, I believe it is a temporary use where you don't need necessarily need plan permission. Um, so that would have been a one off event, um, whereas this is a permanent use. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Councillor Thompson. You're on mute, Janet. I know I couldn't unmute there. Uh, thank you, Chair. Can you just clarify, Paul? Um, how many um, parking uh, places there would be with it with inside the church, please? Um, it's estimated there's about 14 parking spaces. It's not marked out um, as parking at the moment. It's just a, a tarmac area. Uh, it's estimated there's approximately enough space to get 14 within the site. Um, but the, as we said, the requirement of uh, use of this scale would be for 18. Thank you, Paul. Anybody else? Councillor Ostrin, you've got your hand up. Thank you, Chair. I just wondered, um, when, when it's been used as a dance school, obviously the numbers will be limited to the size of the, the class. But if it's a community event, do we know what they mean by community event and, and how many people that could actually involve? I don't, to be perfectly honest. Unless you've got any additional information there, Andy. No, no, I haven't. It was just for that that purpose. I guess the church itself, you know, would have held community events from time to time. So um, it's just a fairly loose, loose definition, really. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Thank you. Councillor Wilson. Thanks, Chair. There's uh, 14 parking spaces in there, which four of them are marked out to the left hand side when you look in. Uh, and you can see them go to the, the Chevron side parking up beside the building. The main problem of the one well, main problem you're going to have when you say in off Cat off Lackgate Lane, people parking at the top end of Pritchard Road, either side of the road, which side they are. It's going to make it a tight turn for anybody coming in when they're up there. I've seen that myself and experienced it. Right opposite near enough the, the entrance into the car park there, there's a little lane goes into um Eastbourne Gardens, I believe. So like some private bungalows in there. People parking there. Which will cause a problem because that's only a short narrow lane, which a big car can't go in. So, unfortunately, I had the uh, experience of nearly having a four before tip me front end off. Fritchard Road itself is not very wide, which is not shown on those photographs. The photographs don't do justice. It's quite narrow compared to what the photographs show. Uh, I firmly believe parking could be an issue if you've got dance competitions going on because you'll have more than 14 cars there, definitely more than 20, I would imagine. Um, so in that way, then you're going to have this, any of the shows that they actually put on, which would attract more than 20 cars. I would suggest if you're going to go down that route, is uh, the white hammerheads to go along each person's drive, all the residents drive along Pritchard Road, just atop the, the residents getting, can get in and out of their own driveways, I don't worry too, really too much about parking. But parking could be an issue, um, Chair, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Anybody else got anything to say? David Branson? Thank you, Chair. But yes, this issue of parking and, and events. Is there any other parking nearby that can be used if you're having a, a large event? Um, isn't it near um, the Ormsby uh, Town Centre or is it too far away? I'm, I'm not really clear. It, it is fairly <laughs> close to the uh, the local centre, which is, apologies, I'm trying to remember the, the name of the road. Is it, um, is it Cargo Street? Always be uh, most ready come our cargo fleet lane. It's close to that local that local centre. So there may be some parking spaces there. Obviously, if parking is an issue, which um, you know members feel it is, then there's always the option that if if you wish for us to 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 go back to the applicant and reconsider some of these matters. Um, if you think that um, we we there is um, 
opportunity for re-looking at some of these uh, some of these issues, then there is always the possibility of looking at that and getting the um, uh, see how we can look to improve the parking situation. But as we said in the report, it's um, what the, the current use will allow um, potentially more parking to go there than the uh, proposed use. Yeah, they, they, of course, previously as a church, it would only be used once a week, whereas mm -hmm. this this could well be used um, six days a week mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you include Saturdays. So it's not completely comparable. That's that's the reason. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. You wanted to come back. Councillor Wilson, you're on mute. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, you could use the car park behind the fountain or um, the you know, thought, uh, Bonsley Institute. There's plenty of parking. Well, there isn't plenty. There's car parking now that's available uh, in that way. Um, going back to Pritchard Road, though, if they were parking down one side and a fire engine or an ambulance had to get down there, nobody, it would slow them down considerably in that route. So, um, Bonsley Caps across the way, no, there's no, well, there's car park on back there, but that's mainly for the flats, the residents. I uh, can't think of any other parking where it would, would, would be viable. I can see a competition would, have, would bump it up to 25, 30 cars a time. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, parking is a problem within that area um, because when it was a church, I used to go to a class there um, and people turning up um, at the class uh, couldn't get parked and they were parking in the high street um, right along the road. So, you know, I have had first, first time experience of parking within that area. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a couple of things that weren't mentioned. The matter of privacy, and I believe the uh, rear view photograph of the building, that the windows don't look it, but I believe they are frosted, so anybody in there can't look out onto the houses. Um, the height of the fence, again, doesn't really show in that photograph, but I believe it's that high that anybody driving in and parking in a Herobone position would be below the height of the fence and therefore not, again, breaching anybody's privacy. Um, as for parking, um, wouldn't dance uh, competitions be classed as a community uh, event? And I think we've already heard uh, from the officers that they're allowed to do that anyway. So does that come into, does that make a difference uh, in this uh, application? Thank you. It, it does and it doesn't, um, Chair, in that um, the community use refers to the existing permission, the existing use of the building. Um, so the existing use of the building, if they were to have a one-off dance event, then, then yes, um, that is the situation. However, this is talk. We are talking here about the um, change of use to this as dance hall, so that it's a slightly different situation. That doesn't um, refer to community use. It's, it's sorry, Paul. Sorry, no. It is for community use as well. Apologies. In association with that, yeah. Sorry. Can I just pop come in, chair, on on the on the, the park some of the parking yes, comments? You, yes, you um, can. Andrew. Yes, yes. And I think you know. I think it's within the report that obviously. Um, it's not meeting the parking standards that we would normally expect for this type of use. And when you look at the layout plan, the parking arrangements aren't what you might normally expect. They're kind of a bit round the back, a bit down the side, and a bit towards the front on Pritchett Road or the side on Pritchett Road. Um, you know, if this was a brand new application on an empty site, we would be considering this slightly differently to how we are now because we, there'll be no fallback position of the existing use. Um, and we would probably expect a better laid out car park and the full provision of parking to be provided given that you know there's residents next door. But obviously the main thing from an officer perspective is that um, we can't ignore the fact that there's existing church there. And you know if the church was very successful with other bits and pieces going on, then arguably I think from what one of the councillors, I think Councillor Thompson was saying, you know there was already parking issues in and around this area. So I think the key thing is that is uh, the key consideration is will this make it noticeably worse than the current situation could allow for? If that if that makes sense. Um, but on, obviously, we understand members' concerns. I think if there are, as Paul said, if there are um, very specific concerns around this, then um, officers may want to consider deferring the application and allow officers to go back to the applicants to discuss further 
um, you know, potential for further arrangements around parking. You'll appreciate the site's constrained, so there's not going to be significant changes probably, but there may be some changes that can be achieved. Um, yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Andy. Right, Councillor Coop, you were first, I think. Thanks, Chair. Um, I think the situation is that you we're changing it from a church, if you like, to a dance studio. That's obvious, I suppose. But the thing is that the whereas before you can have a church with the odd dance event, this is going to be primary dance, but with community use. So you're changing the use from quite a quite a lot. Um, I think that the problem is parking. Uh, and I think the suggestion about going back to look at it might be a very good idea because um, once we give planning permission for this, uh, then we get problems. It's going to be quite difficult to solve um, that area, as quite has been pointed out by various councillors, is very tight for parking. And I would hate the, the residents not being able to get through. Thanks, Chair. Councillor Branson. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, the, the, the situation is similar to the other planning applications that happen in other places where you have somebody changing the use and you don't really know um, how popular it's going to be. Um, so if you take kind of international uh, kind of competitions uh, um, uh, and, and, and events, it could be that they have one a year. They could, on the other hand, become very successful and have one every month or one every two weeks. Um, if you've no limit on the number of times that they have big competitions there, you're going to have a major problem. Um, that's the thing that really strikes me here. Parking is clearly inadequate. For a one-off event a year, I, I suppose it wouldn't cause too many problems, but you can imagine the problem that's going to happen if this is a regular event. Uh, and, and that's my main concern. So I do think we probably need to take this back uh, and ask the people who are putting it forward what their kind of plan is in terms of the number of events uh, mm. that they're likely to hold there that are going to pose potential parking problems. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you Councillor, Wilson. Councillor Wilson, you wanted to speak? No? Councillor Garvey. Chair, yeah, I believe uh, Councillor Dodds had a hand up before me. Oh, did she? Councillor Dodds, sorry. Thank you, Chair. I noticed in the notes it says the property is already in use as a dance studio so has there been any complaints so far and how long has it been in use do we know this i also realize that some places when they're having dance competitions if they're coming from out of the area they come by coach so if if, if we could be given information on that which we don't know at the moment this coach could drop people off and then park behind the fountain or in the, the shopping car park area that could be something to find out from the applicant. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Garvey, your turn now. Thanks, Chair. I, I just, just wanted to, to add to what I said earlier. I've, I've seen this venue used at capacity. And yes, there is extra parking uh, along along the road, but it was nothing that, that, was, that was really that bad. I'd like to see more. Obviously, it, it's a dance school. We'd like to see more of these pop up in our areas. For, for for children, they're, they're, they're high, highly disciplined places where children go and enjoy themselves and 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 and, and that sort of thing. Whether this is is an issue with parking and cars, I, I, I'm close to uh, uh, and I've good friends who run dance schools, and usually with dance schools, it's drop offs, not parking. Um, the the parents will drop the the, the children off. And then pick them up at a later date. Um, I think um, it's been covered that you know there might be if it does get popular, there might be more and more um, footfall or, or, or um, vehicles going in and out of this site. There is a, a, a an element of um, land at the front of the building, which is now a garden. Uh, it's quite a large garden, and, and, and would make not nice to say changing a garden to a car park, but it would make for extra car parking. I would like to see more whether this site as it stands is 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 ready for this. I don't know. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Garvey. Anybody else got anything to say? No? No. Right. Well, we've got no applicants or agents, we've got no objectors, we've got no ward councillors. 
Um, so really, I think it's up to the committee to get together and see if we can find some sort of proposals that we uh, that we would find um, suitable. So does anybody got anything in that case to say? Councillor Garvey, you go first. Yeah, I'd like to propose that we take it back to the applicant and, 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 and get more information on, on, on how it, the, the more figures on how and when it's going to be used. And also, I think we need to, to ask them to address the parking issue as well. Okay. Councillor, Councillor Branston, I think, I suppose you're going to second that, are you? Indeed I am, yes. Right. So is, is everybody in favour then of us deferring this application, giving it back to Paul and Andy? and having a look at sorting the parking out and the other issues as to how many how many big events they're going to hold per year are we all agreeable to that without just going down asking yes or no anybody not agreeable with it no okay application deferred right second application today is Rid of all these out my way. Second application today is erection of 296 dwellings at Grove Hill. Now, um, I believe that uh, Shelley Perman is going to do the presentation on this, Shelley. So, if you would like to share your screen with us and Thank talk you, us Chair. through it. Thank you. Um, Chair, just to advise the agent for this application is currently joining the meeting. Okay. That's fine, yeah, yeah. Are you all able to see my screen? Yes, we are. Hopefully. Okay, thank you, Chair. So this application is for the erection of 296 dwellings and associated landscaping and parking. The site is split into three sections, one to the south on either side of Pinewood Avenue, another to the north on Martinburn Road, and the main section located centrally, bordered by Ashfield Avenue, Keith Road and the Vale. The site is a brownfield site following the removal of houses to allow for regeneration in the area. No objections have been received from residents and two representations in support of the application have been received. The site is allocated for housing under policy H19 for 610 houses. On the slide, the brown areas show the allocated sites under this policy. The sites with the red star are those that have been approved for housing. that's either built or under construction. The yellow stars identify the sites that we're considering today. And if this application is approved, that will be a total of 497 houses approved under this policy, with 113 left for development across the remaining three sites. The proposed development is a mix of two, three and four bedroom properties, including bungalows, dormer bungalows, two storey and three storey houses, the majority of which are semi detached with some detached and terrace properties. All the dwellings are affordable properties with a mix of affordable rent and shared ownership. There has been lengthy discussion with Cleveland Police regarding secured by design. One of the key points in relation to this is permeability and vehicle access. Currently, there are six vehicle entrance points to the main site. This has been re reduced by this development to two from Ashfield Avenue. Other access points are for private shared drives and don't provide through access through the site. Boundary treatments and methods such as high curbs will also be used to prevent and discourage vehicle access to the open spaces. The properties are orientated so they overlook the areas of open space and provide and the pedestrian links through the site providing natural surveillance. The development will result in the removal of some existing trees, the majority of which are assessed as being of low quality and value. The proposed landscaping scheme includes the replacement of more than double the number of trees to be removed. The trees and landscaped areas are located along the main roads around the site and provide green links through the site, connecting to the adjacent park to the west. There are two areas of open space within the site for residents, and there are also areas of private communal gardens, which are shown at the bottom of the screen. 
This, this shy, slide shows examples of the house types that are being proposed. They are of a modern design and include a mix of finishing materials. They are all of a good size and internally they meet nationally described space standards. Here are some artists' impressions of the proposed development. And now I'll hand over to Simon, who will take you through the highways matters for the development. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you. And thank you, Shelley, if you could just uh, move on to the next slide. So, what we the slide we've proposed here is you can see the darker pink areas in the centre, which are the three elements of the development site. The blue dots are the public transport um, bus stops uh, served by frequent services, with the stars there showing uh, local facilities, shops, schools. Um, you will also note that you've got the little theatre just west of the site. And then slightly further away, you've got the James Cook Hospital. On red, uh, in the red circles, that signalised uh, pedestrian or cycle crossing facilities. And then running north-south on the western side of the development, you've got the National Cycle Network Route 65. Um, what we've shown in green there, as you can, it hopefully becomes apparent, is the missing links in terms of infrastructure that the development is proposing. So you've got the signalised junction of the Vale and, and Keith Road with pedestrian cycle facilities. You've got heading towards um, the shops at Bellevue, you've got a ped cycle facility on the development frontage. And then on the south side of Keith Road, there's going to be a short section of westbound cycle um, infrastructure put in, which will link the signalised junction back to the existing Toucan Crossing just west of the site. In terms of distances, what, what's shown there, um, the, the sort of light pink circle, is a, a five metre walk time. And you'll see that, you know, you've got bus stops and shops either within that or literally just on the edge of that. So, you know, we're looking at a lot of facilities within about a six minute walk. Um, you've got the Bellevue shops, which are a 10 minute walk. That is in accordance with national guidance. If we start considering slightly further afield as well, and the importance of that NCN route running along the western boundary, the town centre is actually only a 10 minute cycle ride. So the, the site is well located in terms of sustainable infrastructure. Uh, if we just go on to the next slide, please. I think in, in terms of, um, you know, avoiding another committee and, and going over the detail of the of the AIMSOM modelling. Clearly the site has been plugged into the, the AIMSOM strategic model and what I pr pr propose to talk about here is the the main element of the highway works in the scheme and that is the signalisation of the Vale, Keith Road and Hollyhurst Avenue. What you can see there in, in red is the proposed alignment. So we're going from an uncontrolled sort of slightly staggered crossroads into a forearm signal control junction. It'll have pedestrian cycle crossing facilities on all arms. Um, and this came about, we, we've talked previously on other committees about safety, road safety. And this site has been a case where we are aware that there is an accident history at this junction. That accident history, once uh, we investigated it, identified a clear pattern and cluster of types of accidents in certain highway users. So it follows that by putting more development into the area, you are going to exacerbate the risk or the frequency of those accidents occurring. So we worked with the applicants and we've um, come up with this signalised uh, scheme, which hopefully uh, you'll agree will make the area a lot safer. Um, it also serves other functions in that it reduces the severance created uh, by Keith Road between residential communities to the north and the south and assists with the sustainability. Um, you can see the ped cycle route on the north side of Keith Road, which is also proposed by the development. And, and that also is um, set back slightly. You're trying to protect those existing trees across Keith Road and work's being done to to change the alignment so it doesn't impact those. 
there's some other typical details that can be seen all the way around the boundary of the site and that you will see there are a number of private shared drives um, which will minimise the amount of vehicle points onto the Vale, Keith Road, for example, and also areas of managed on-street visitor parking um, to try to, again, control that, that parking provision. That approach is also taken within the development and there are um, areas of residential allocated parking mixed with areas of managed informal visitor casual caller parking. Um, and I think that's all I'd like to um, talk about on the highway side at this point, but I'm open for any other questions as it may arise. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Simon. Have you finished as well, Shelley? Just say ready for questions. It just, uh, just remains to say that the recommendation on this application is for approval subject to the number of conditions that are listed in the okay. report. Right. Thank you very much. Anybody got any questions for either Shelley or Simon? Councillor Coop, your hand seems to be up. Thank you, Chair. Um, normally I'd mention uh, shops and things this time, but I think that's been fully covered, which I'm pleased to see. It's it's well within walking distance or public transport or cycling distance of shops, so that's good. Uh, it on about access and things. And one thing that I know in that area, the problem with motorbikes and quad bikes, etc. cetera, uh, I'm sure this has been addressed, um, but it's one area which is a definite problem. So. Uh, that's the only thing I would bring up, um, but apart from that, it, uh, it looks quite a good scheme. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Somebody else, Julie Ross, did you were next. Just um, adding to what David just said, um, I'm, I'm pleased that the, uh, the access points have been reduced to two, because one of the problems we've had in all of the new developments in this area is rat runs. And, you know, the quad bikes, the motorbikes, the more access there is, the more access points, the worse it is. So I'm really pleased that um, that's been reduced to two. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Nugent, then Councillor McTee. <coughs> yes, I would just like to uh, feel assured by what Simon says that um, for we're going to um, the, the connection or the junction of Keith Road, the Vale, and Hollyhurst Avenue. Councillor Nugent, you're on mute. You must have pressed by accident. My concern just is for the safety and for a safe crossing, if it's lights or whatever, you know, whatever you have decided. Uh, but we need it to be secure and we need to be assured about that, Simon, because of the past history with it, with accidents and that. OK. Thank you, Councillor Nugent. Right, Councillor McTeague. Yes, thank you, Chair. Through you, um, can I make a few points for others? Really well, if you just if you just ask your questions, and then we'll have the we'll have the agent will speak, and then you are back on again, and you've got unlimited time to say what you want in that. Is that okay? Because then you I'll can wait, then. you can I'll you wait. can you're you can question you can question the I don't know whether it's applicant or the agent. It's, but not, you can it's question not. It's not question. Well. It's not okay. question. Right. Okay. So you're aware, right? Anybody else? Councillor Branson, sorry, David, I did see you originally. That's okay, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I, I might be wrong on this. Please correct me. Um, along the Vale, have I have we got a cycle track on the right hand side of it, or am I just missing no. the map? No, no, we haven't. We haven't. Not, offi okay. not officially, David. No. No, that's that's okay because you've got one on the left hand side, which is which is what I was thinking. And I couldn't see why you had one on the right hand side. That's all right. That that's that's what I wanted to know actually. Thank you. Anybody else want to say anything? Any questions? No? Okay. So we'll ask the I don't know whether the applicant or the agent. Mr. Mark Massey. Are you with us, sir? Uh, yes. Just before you start, you've got five minutes, Mark. And our legal representative will be timing you. So I, I start when you go. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank officers at Middlesbrough Council for their support and efforts in assisting the wider design team to progress these proposals for high quality housing on this site. The design team has spent a lot of time 
refining the development proposals to ensure a high quality, sensitive development for the 296 new built houses. This includes a mixture of two, three and four bed family houses and bungalows across the site within Kirtledge parking and private front and rear garden space. The proposed layout seeks to develop the existing cleared sites and surrounding areas of housing and green space to create a thriving and sustainable development that's fully integrated with Grove Hill. The concept for the design is to utilize existing features and assets of the site to help create a landscaped environment that extends from the existing green space and cycle route along the Vale. Additionally, protected semi-private green spaces will be provided for the new community to share, giving opportunities for neighbors to interact with each other. This development is aimed at all ages and all household types and will create a wide range of opportunities for social interaction and sustainable travel, making this a truly sustainable neighborhood. Strong frontages and street scenes are provided throughout the site. Bank gables and rear properties fronting roads are avoided. The proposals create a new landscaped area and utilize existing mature trees to create a sequence of spaces linking into the wider area and ongoing regeneration in Middlesbrough. Security has been raised by the planning authority as a particularly important issue to address throughout the layout and meetings have taken place with the council's own internal consultee on crime prevention. Careful consideration has been given to the public private space throughout the development and how different boundary treatments are used to secure the common or private spaces within the housing blocks and the bungalow properties. Secure access to these spaces will be via a gate with a key code. 13 Group and the design team are aware of the security issues in the wider area and therefore great effort has been made to ensure that public spaces are well overlooked and clearly relate to the new housing. The intention is for residents within the development to feel a strong connection with the development and the green spaces that have been incorporated within the layout, thereby ensuring a sense of ownership. Active frontages and animated gables ensure eyes on the street and good levels of natural surveillance throughout the development. The two publicly accessible green spaces adjacent to Keith Road and Ashfield Avenue are defined by feature brick walls with scoria block inset boundaries and fronted on three sides by housing, ensuring strong surveillance. Planting within the spaces and throughout the development has been carefully considered to avoid areas and opportunities for concealment. Walls which face out from communal gardens onto highway are 2.2 metres high to provide secure private spaces. The proposed layout is fully compliant with the Council's policy in respect of policy DM2, achieving high quality design which seeks to ensure public and private spaces follow good practice guidance. The application site is located within Flood Zone 1 which is the area of lowest risk and therefore it's considered to be an appropriate location for housing. Flood risk from all sources has been considered and with mitigation where necessary it's been established that these sources don't pose a risk to the development. The proposed development at Grove Hill will provide 100% affordable homes. These proposals also involve a mix of different housing typologies and sizes aimed at all ages, including bungalows, two, three, and four bedroom homes. The affordable housing is being built for 13 Group, who will own and manage the homes. The design team has spent time discussing and refining the proposals to meet the requirements and guidance of highways. In particular, a cycle route has been integrated within the site running parallel with Keith Road, to link with the wider cycle network. Vehicular access from Keith Road and the Vale has been restricted to give greater priority to pedestrians and only allow vehicles to enter from the northern part of the site on Ashfield Avenue. The economic benefits derived from the scheme will be substantial and will impact positively on the local area and are a significant material consideration in the determination of this application. The development proposals represent a major regeneration opportunity for Grove Hill and will have a major positive socio-economic benefit for the area and wider locality. In economic terms, the proposal will support direct construction jobs and further spin-off jobs in the supply chain and related services per year of construction. It will generate additional expenditure within the local economy, supporting the creation of new jobs. In social terms, the proposals will boost the supply of affordable housing. The estimated construction spend is £39.5 million and this will be supporting approximately 328 FTE construction jobs spread over the five-year build-out. The scheme will deliver an additional £1.59 million of direct gross value added over the build period and we hope Chair, it will be a major five minutes. contribution. Thank Thanks, you. Emma.
Thank you, Mr. Massey. You finished anyway. Anybody got any questions for Mr. Massey? Councillor McTeague has, but just could you just wait because you're on next, John. You can ask him the question then. Don't leave, don't leave the meeting, Mr. Massey, will you? No, certainly. Anybody else? Councillor Branson. Thank you, Chair. Um, is it possible to cycle from Keith Road up to the northern end of the estate? Uh, in other words, is it possible to get access to the roadway out without going up Ashfield Road? Because I, it, it does seem to me that you're taking people all the way around the houses if they want to get to the northern bit and they're on bikes. Um, does that make sense? Uh, it does. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'm, I'm sure with uh, some careful thinking, we should be able to accommodate that. Yes. You see, if you look at right at the bottom on Keith Road, you've got that open, that slightly open. Well, yeah, it is an open space. And next to it, you've got those row of trees. Yeah, if you had indeed. a cycle route through there, it would connect onto the roads, yeah, and then indeed, the yes. people would be able to get the internal to the internal. I'm just thinking. Otherwise, people will take their bike across that across the field or across the grass. Um, and get on understood. The That's an extremely good idea, and, and I will address that with Simon uh, later, if I may. Yep. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Councillor Cooper, you've got your hand up. Thank you, Chair. I just thought I could uh, throw a bit of light on the cycle path uh, question, because there is a decent cycle path that runs all the way down from the Avenue of Trees. Um, you then come down to Devil's Bridge, you then come down to St. Chad's, you go across towards the Port Old Calf, it's called the A65, and you can end up in the bus station at Middlesbrough where there's a safe cycle uh, secure lock point. Um, it does get a lot of use, um, that cycle path, um, with walkers, dog walkers, cyclists, etc. And prior to lockdown, there was a good community uh, feeling in this area shown by the number of people that used to turn out and do litter picking. It was obviously a, um, a housing estate before this. It's been empty far too long. Um, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Councillor Dodds, I think you had your hand up. No? Anybody else? <laughs> right, OK. So we'll now hand over to Councillor McTeague. Yes, Chair. Um, at one point, do I, am I allowed to ask a question now and make comments? Yeah, or do yes, I you are. Yes, you are. You've got, you've both, got... Both at the same time? Whatever you want, yes. You've got okay. unlimited unlimited time, but... My How many minutes? My, my tea's about five o'clock, so... How many uh, minutes? You do, it's unlimited, John. You don't have any minutes. Okay. Council, okay. Councillors speak. As First of all, I'd like to say that this is probably one of the best, if not the best things to happen in this ward. For as long as I can remember, so I fully support it. I'm delighted that it's being used. That Brownfield site is being used, which is what the people in the town have been crying out for for many years. Um, the land itself now is simply being used as an open fly tip, and getting Eremus, uh, oh, sorry, thirteen now, isn't it? Getting the thirteen group to uh, monitor it regularly um, is has proved to be impossible. Um, we're badly in need of social housing for years, but what I'd like to know is, if possible, how many of these new houses are actually going to be available for rent? Because that is what's badly needed in this town. Um, the, one of the best things about it is the um, traffic management that's being installed. And I'm very puzzled as to the comments being made, comment that have been made by the officer, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name, who told us about the number of accidents and near misses there. Because for years I've been pushing with the backing of the residents to have something like that, in particular um, at school times, trying to get it down to a sort of avenue was horrendous. And all I ever got was from the, from the council was not enough accidents, not enough near misses there. So I'm being told the opposite today, but I'm delighted, absolutely delighted, as will the residents be there. I'm not happy about trees being chopped down, but you know, if they're going to plant more, please don't plant, plant saplings or whips or whatever they're called. Please let's have some really, really good mature trees and because of um, vandalism, which you know everybody in the town is aware of, in particular councillors, let's have these trees really, really well protected because the last lot that were put in, in Grove Hill, every single one of them was vandalised because it didn't have enough um, protection around them. 
Can I ask if the front gardens of these houses are going to be open plan, please? Because open plan is just a disaster. We get lots of complaints of cars being driven over them, children riding the bikes over them, et cetera, et cetera. And eventually, people tend to put up fences anyway, and then there's an argument over that. Um, because they're going, I don't know who's going to own them. The, 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 those are going to be rented. I don't know who's going to be oh, going to own them. If it's 13, who's going to yes. be responsible for keeping the area clean? Because very often when we report something, ex-council estates, which a lot of uh, our awards are, we get uh, the answer, it's not, a, it's not council land, it's 13 land. So we need to know who's going to be responsible for maintaining the land there. And I think that's about it, Chair. Yes, it is. But I'm absolutely okay. over the moon, absolutely over the moon, that that land is going to be used for this purpose. And I hope everybody else agrees with me. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Massey, do you have any option to uh, answer any of those questions as to uh, you, you, how yes, many are going to be rented and how many are going to be sold or what? To, 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 just to confirm, 100% of them are all affordable homes, so they'll be homes for rent uh, for local people. Um, the, the, the gardens will not be open plan. They will have um, hedge and estate railing uh, to make sure that people have got defensible space so that um, it's safe and so that people feel passive surveillance is going to work and uh, we fully agree that um, the trees that go back will be well protected and should be as large as it possibly can be. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Massey. Right. Um, anybody else got any questions on anything? Mr. New Council Nugent, you've got your hand up waving. Yeah, could I just say that I support everything that Councillor McTai has said, and I hope that it comes into flourishing because this particular area has been so badly run down and so badly maintained. So I agree with everything that's been said. Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor. Anybody else got anything to say? Councillor Coop. Thanks, Chair. I just want to echo uh, to to Mr. Massey, the agent, what I said early on about um, access to it. I'm sure you've taken that into account, and I'm, I'm glad to hear about the uh, the not open plan, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, whereas I'm very in favour of what Councillor Branson said about bike access, as long as it doesn't allow uh, motorbikes and quad bikes, etc., into the area, and I'm sure you'd be thinking about yeah, CCTV. So. Well, maybe you can't stop them, but you can do as much as you can to mitigate the problem because I know it is a severe problem over there, and I'm sure that um, as much we've done to keep them out. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Thompson. You wish to say something? Yeah, thank you, Chair. I'm just glad to say um, I'm glad to see that there's going to be uh, more bungalows built um, within the area by 13, mm -hmm. um, because I know there's been a high demand. Um, for these bungalows, um, particularly from the flats that's um, getting demolished in my ward, um, the two blocks of flats um, when I was speaking to 13, uh, when they were doing the reallocations, they said that the demand for the bungalows was in, they didn't even have enough for them. So I'd like to say I'm glad to see that you have more bungalows. So thank, thank you very you, much. Mm -hmm. Councillor Garvey. Thanks, Chair. Um, I used to live on this site, believe it or not, um, and when you talk about an, an area for regeneration, uh, if you compare to what was there and what is going to be there, is is, is what this makes um, these sort of meetings enjoyable to see actual regeneration on the Brownfield site. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Garvey. Councillor Nugent, you got your hand up again. And you're muted again. Could I just, uh, Mr. Massey has mentioned it, and Co Councillor Coop, with regard to the motorbikes, this ward of ours is run over with motorbikes. So I'm hoping that Mr. Massey or 13 would be prepared to take this into consideration and hopefully put some sort of measures in place where this can be uh, stopped, perhaps you know, or something can be done about it. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. 
Councillor Rostron. Could I just make a plea that any trees that are planted are indigenous, not these flimsy things from the Himalayas? Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Julia. Councillor McTeague, you're there again. Yes, Chair. Um, with regard to the motorbikes, um, we've it, certainly in Beechwood, where I live, um, we're surrounded by um, uh, huge green fields, well maintained by the council. And the way we got around the quad bikes and the motorbikes was um, I arranged for huge boulders. And they, they do look nice because the weathering time, and they look as if they've been there years, huge boulders to be planted in gaps. Um, and that has prevented um, some motorbikes and certainly some quad bikes. So if perhaps the builders could arrange for something like that, they look ornate, not horrible things. They look quite ornate. And obviously that's the last for you know years at years. And that would be an ideal to stop quad bikes getting in. Um, but as regards to motorbikes, believe you me, they, if they, they will find a way, they will find a way. And the, the only way there is to have the cameras. Perhaps they would fund some cameras or part from the cameras. But those huge builders um, would prevent the, definitely prevent the quad bikes. And it would also prevent cars as well, because sometimes, you know, these truckers, whatever they're called, they will find a way with the cars if they can. But these builders have really, really worked. They've, they've done marvellous. I recommend them to anybody. They're marvellous. Thank you for your indulgence, Chair. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Councillor. Mr Massey, if you could take some of those ideas into fruition, we would be very grateful. The, the, all these points are noted and we'll do our very best. Thank you very much. Right. Nobody else appears to wish to speak. We have no more, no objectors. We have no more ward councillors. Uh, so all we need to do now is uh, read out the recommendations in the report, which Shelley has told us are uh, to uh, accept the um, may, may I just come in there for a moment, Jay? Yes, you can, I, say, yes. I neglected to say that the application is also subject to a Section 106 agreement. Um, right, which right. Uh, seeks a financial contribution towards some improvement works at the roundabout um, by, uh, I'm trying to think of the road now, Simon will, will know better than me, the road, um, but uh, it also seeks um, contribution towards some uh, money for improvement works uh, to the Beck as well. Right, thank you very much. Right, so we'll now go to the committee. We'll ask if anybody has any proposals. Councillor Rostron, your hand is up. I move approval, Chair. Do you have a second there? Councillor Cope? I'd second that, Chair. Yeah, I'd second that. Okay, so we'll just go through the rigmarole. We'll go through it and do the vote. Anybody else got anything to say? Nobody's against it or anything? Nothing? No, right. Straightforward vote. I'll shout your names out like we normally do. It's four against or abstain. We'll start with me. John Hobson, I'm four. Councillor Cope? Four, Chair. Councillor Cooper? Four, Chair. Councillor Branson? Four, Chair. Councillor Dodds? Four, Chair. Councillor Garvey? Four, Chair. Councillor Nugent? Four, Chair. Councillor Thompson? Four. Councillor Wilson? Have I missed you out, Julia? Councillor Austin, sorry. Four. <laughs> Councillor <laughs> Wilson. You need to unmute your microphone, Councillor Wilson. Four. Good lad. Chair, that's all 10 members have voted to approve the application. Okay. So now I can confirm that following the vote, the decision of the committee is a unanimous decision to approve this application. So thank you very much for that. We'll now go on to the last application of the day, which is the railway carriage. So, uh, is Andy, Andy, are you going to do this? Yes, Chair, as long as I don't get um, um, kicked off the system. Apologies for disappearing earlier. Okay. Paul's going to um, do the slides for me. Hopefully that'll keep things working a bit better. Right. So. This is the proposal for the reposition, sorry, for the positioning of a converted railway carriage. It's on land within the ownership of the existing bed and breakfast, which is known as Rye Hill House. 
the carriage, if we could just move to the next slide, Paul, the carriage, this is an example of a, a carriage in its pre-restored condition. This is an example of the sort of thing that's been proposed. The carriage would be positioned just off Brass Castle Lane behind an existing tree belt. If we could just, yeah, there we go. So you can see the red um, sort of rectangle at the top there. That's the intended position of the carriage. We can see Brass Castle Lane and the golf course just turning the corner. Um, the National Planning Policy Framework encourages local authorities to recognise the role that rural areas play in supporting tourism and in supporting the rural economy. Um, it recommends that local authorities take a positive approach to sustainable new development in order to create jobs and prosperity in rural areas um, and support sustainable tourism that brings obvious benefits to an area. Your own local plan requires high quality sustainable development, uh, limited impacts on surrounding amenity and seeks to control development outside of the defined limits of development, which this is. And it's it really in the interests of protecting the open countryside and its in, intrinsic character uh, in essence. To note, um, this area is designated as a special landscape area within the uh, local plan. It's a, it's a 1996 policy from the, the old local plan, which was moved forward uh, or, or retained, retained when the new local plan came out. Um, that policy advises that special attention will be given to the protection and conservation of the scenic quality and character of the landscape, and that development will be permitted where it wouldn't detract from the special or scenic character, um, where it's of a high standard of design, carefully located to reflect the traditional scale of buildings and landscape of, of the area and materials and the like, and where it doesn't have a detrimental impact on features important to the landscape. Now, um, so tourism outside limited development is policy compliant then in principle. It's just really the, whether it's compatible in scale, materials, appearance, etc. This is obviously not a building in its typical sense of a, you know, been built from the, you know, foundations up and, and, a, and, a, and a complete building. It's what a lot of people would view as a temporary building, albeit it's been proposed as a permanent structure on the site to form a sort of guest accommodation for the, for the bed and breakfast function. Um, officers consider that this proposal, Paul, if we can maybe move on to the next slide, we feel that this proposal is small in scale and when we're talking about the impact on the, the the character of the area we can see from this slide that it's kind of nestled if you like by the the wooded areas so it's not part of the open landscape and it's um it's the the, the sort of special landscape area as a result officers feel that it's not affected or not unduly affected because of the scale of of the proposed railway carriage and the nature of the, the sort of mature wooded areas around it um it would be a fairly unique intervention into this landscape and not like i say not particularly typical but relatively small scale um we can see from the image there's open fields adjacent to its position there is a footpath to the south of this site so there would be views towards it from that footpath but that would be against the backdrop of these mature trees that we're talking about so there's no significant concerns that it's going to stand out um particularly um, by officers. There has been some objections received, Chair, and they're detailed within the reports. In brief, there's seven objections and they raise issues around the visual impact of the development on the character of the area and matters of traffic, uh, refuse and drainage. To ensure the necessary parking spaces as, uh, and bin provisions and drainage are provided, there's a, a recommend a condition recommended to pick these up and deal with these to make sure that all those details have to get agreed with ourselves and there's a condition which requires the carriage and its associated base the drainage and the other bits and pieces that are proposed as part of this to be removed completely from the site should the carriage actually not be used anymore so if if it, if it were approved and used for say three years then there's a condition there which prevents the carriage being sort of a long-term um, negative impact on the area, if that makes sense. It's, it's only been uh, potentially allowed in this area to support tourism. So if it's not providing tourism, then it should be removed from the landscape in essence. Um, traffic to holiday accommodation is likely to be minimal. Um, it's no notable consequences for this, for this location. It's a very small number of traffic movements. Um, if we just can go through the remainder of the slides, Paul. So this is a view from Brass Castle Lane looking towards the site. This is an old photograph now. 
um, because members will be aware that the Bridlewoods development, um, which was approved partly by the planning inspector, and, and since then uh, there's been some approvals gone through committee for houses. That's now taking shape uh, behind that wall that you can see. So this is a kind of stitched together group of photographs going around the corner. The green signboard pretty much in the centre of the site, the carriages would be just behind there, behind those uh, trees there. So it would be within those trees. And you can see the entrance into the Bridlewoods housing development just to the left of that. If we can just move to the next one, please, Paul. This is the view from, um, the, if you like, the, the private drive to the Rye Hills B&B. &B. And it's the open field, which I mentioned earlier, with a footpath off to the right hand side. And it's the approximate position of the railway carriage just shown by that um, pink uh, sort of rectangle. It's just in just on the edge of the field, just into that that wooded area. If we can just look at the next one, please, Paul. So this is a view. The top left is a view from the driveway looking out towards Brass Castle Lane. So you can see uh, there's an existing hedge. Obviously, these are very recent. Um, there's no leaves on the trees or anything like that. The bottom right image, um, the applicants removed a couple of trees in there recently. We understand from the applicant that that was uh, management of the trees within that area. And the the, the position that, or the, the, the area that little sort of copse amongst the trees or, or space amongst the trees is effectively where the, the railway carriage is intended to go. And just have a look at the next one, please, Paul. And this is a view looking up the driveway. So you can see there's an existing bin that's there where the bins are for the B&B. &B, and there's a white van there. And that's a, a, the approximate location of, of parking spaces. But there's a condition to, to get those de details finalised. What we don't want is for things to be particularly visible. So we would expect those to be dealt with and screened in some appropriate way to this uh, rural setting. Uh, is there another one, Paul? Yeah, and so comments. Some of the comments received were from occupants in Bridlewoods, feeling that it would have a negative impact on the character of the area. And we can just see it in relation to those five properties that have been, um, un well, which are under construction at the moment. I think a couple of them might be complete now, but others are under construction. So you can just see it. Um, it's not too far away from from that other built form in and around this area. Um, and that's it, if essentially, Chair. We're more than happy to come back on any points that members may raise, but it's a recommendation to approve subject to those conditions. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Anybody got any questions for Andy on this? Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Chair. Can we just clarify, Rye Hill House or Brass Castle Country House, are those two separate uh, premises or is it just all one? The, uh, the uh, other thing is... <laughs> yeah, I'll let you answer that one first and then I'll come on to the other bit. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and answer it as best I can. As I understand it, there's Rye Hill House, which is the bed and breakfast. It's the main house. It might also be known as Brass Castle Country House. I'm not sure, but I know there is. There's a Rye Hill Cottages and there is also a Rye Hill Farm Cottages. So it's a little bit confusing down there, to be quite honest. Yeah, um, I found that. I went to have a look. Um, as you come, what uh, the site location plan and the aerial view of wider landscape don't actually show the road in its true situation. What you've got coming from the town is the bend goes down to the right. So you would be looking to the left for Castle Country House or Rye Hill House. There's only one sign there which says Brass Castle House. Um, and you would then see the, you would actually see it, the, the carriageway right on that bend. Um, and it is, the trees are being removed and they're not as the old aerial view is showing us like loads of foliage to hide things. It would be in full view right on the bend. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned about that. I'm just wondering if um, there's any plan to put in a privet that would hide it to stop uh, Motors going off the road when they're looking around, trying to find Rye Hill House and seeing the different signs and things. Just something to be considered. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else got any questions for Andy? Councillor Coop. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's a difficult one. I mean, the railway carriage, my railway carriage, uh, it's not. There's no connection with the area to the railway, so it just seems a bit strange to me. 
Um, certainly that sort of land there, it'll have to have some substantial um, footings and things in, but otherwise it'll just sink into the ground. Um, I mean, it's an old railway carriage. I'm sure they'll have done things like asbestos surveys and things like that before they put it in. It just, just seems totally out of place. And it will as you go going along there. I mean, are they going to keep the same colour? Is it going to be red uh, as you go along that road? It's, it's going to stick out, which they may wish to do. But personally, at the moment, I'm just feeling it's a bit out of character of the area. I don't know what uh, what Andy thinks. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Just a sec, Julia. Andy, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Has, has there been any sign of an asbestos report on it? I'm not aware of one chair. Um, I mean, that in handling the carriage and people stopping in it, I assume that they would have to meet um, certain regulations, right. which would be on planning. If, um, if, if we needed to, could we condition that? Um, it's not really a planning issue. It's a health and safety issue. So it's not something we should right. particularly okay. be dealing with. Right. What we okay. should be ensuring is that it doesn't affect the the, the, the land. Um, so, you know, it doesn't deteriorate or, or sort of collapse into the land and, and loot it or something but we can find the information out chair we can certainly right. do that and, and try and make sure that those um yeah. bits are dealt with okay thank you councillor rostron sorry julia you were next. Okay. um just looking at the responses that have been received there are obviously quite a few problems there at the moment for the the current um residents won't this just exacerbate the situation make the parking and, and the traffic and the problems that they've got worse Do you want to come in on some of those points, yeah, Chair? Yes, if you will, yes. So obviously, Councillor Cooper talked about it being quite visible at this point in time, and it absolutely is. You know, those trees are obviously drop the leaves, the majority of them. There are some holly bushes within that little stand of trees, so that it will, and it should, that would be in between the carriage and, and the Brass Castle Lane. And there is an option, if members were minded to approve it, that they could request a... Uh, uh, a detailed landscaping scheme to be submitted and agreed so that you know native appropriate sort of native species that maybe you know um that hold the leaves through the winter can be planted as part of this scheme um to support that and at least bolster what's already there um there was obviously comment about um yeah, there was comments about the footings and all uh, and bits and pieces, and yeah, that it would need to be. Sit, I think the intention is for it to sit on rails, which you'd assume would have some sort of sleepers or concrete footings underneath. So, um, it shouldn't necessarily be significant as an as a as a element because it, you know it's it's just acting as a, a something to support the carriage in in a very lightweight use. But um, that would be covered by condition what that what that is and how that how that happens. Um, in terms of councillor roster and your comment what was sorry what was your just so i make sure i get it was it about traffic in relation to traffic and the implications of traffic traffic and, and parking and the problems that are currently being caused won't won't this additional uh, facility exacerbate that so i think there seems to be an issue with this property and that it goes the driveway to this property goes halfway round a loop and then there seems to be severance of some sort and then it continues on possibly as a public footpath through the farm and it comes out further along brass castle lane um it really is a private matter a lot of those issues from what i can from the ones that have commented about people um driving past and through the farm and causing problems when they shouldn't be there whether or not they can do that is slightly irrelevant to this application fortunately because um this Railway carriage is right at the entrance to the to the um, to the private drive, so people can pull in, um, pull up. There's space for them to park off the the existing carriageway, and there'll be space for them to effectively do a turn and then go back out onto Brass Castle Lane. So there's, this shouldn't require anyone to have to carry on all the way round. Um, it's not necessarily going to solve problems if people if there's already problems getting created, but it's it should be fairly minimal as well the amount of traffic from this this proposed use. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Dodds. Yes, I'm concerned how close it is to Brass Castle Lane, this carriage. The, this farm or house, whatever they want to call it, has got so much land. Why can't the carriageway be put further along the lane? But there again, the lane is so narrow and so badly maintained, that could be a reason. When you're saying there's going to be parking, are they going to be making a parking area on the grass verge? 
And the only way you can turn around to come back is a good way down this narrow lane, which when we drove down, it, it, avoiding potholes, talking about potholes in Middlesbrough, well, they were creators. You know, I think if they want people to stay in this carriageway, they're going to have to go to the main house for their breakfast. That, that's got to be, be improved. I know it's not part of this planning, but I do think with all that land, the carriage could be moved further down the lane. That's all I'd like to say. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Branson and Councillor Wilson and Councillor Nugent. Thank you, Jim. I know this area very well because it's not far from where I live now. I often go for walks there, many walks at the moment, of course. Um, now, the um, the thing that occurs to me is having looked on the plan, they do seem to have a fair bit of land. And I can't understand why they're locating the, locating the, the carriageway uh, at where they are. Also, from reading the relevant notes, it's clear that they've fallen out badly with their neighbours. Uh, and you can see... <laughs> You can see why. I mean, at the end of the day, um, they're using the pathway that then comes back along the cycle, uh, the uh, bridle way, uh, and passing uh, at Rhinehall Cottage and Rhinehall Farm Cottage and creating a loop. I can't, for the life of me, given the, the, the land that they've got, see why they don't have a loop within their own property uh, and come back down the same road that they went along if you put passing places in. And I think... Um, the point um, Carolyn had made, I think, is very relevant here. I mean, if, in fact, they put a railway carriage in there and the business takes off, then they're going to be constantly using this loop and passing uh, uh, past uh, the uh, Rahel Cottage and Rahel Farm Cottage. I think if I was approving this, I would do two things. First of all, I'd want the carriage moving further away from the road. Uh, and the second thing is I would want them to sort out uh, the arrangements um, for accessing and egressing the property so that it doesn't uh, require them to go um, past the other two properties, Rhinehill Farm uh, and, and Rhinehill Cottages, and then maybe the residents of those two properties won't be so upset with them. You might solve two problems in one. That, that's that's what I would do. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Nugent. Yeah. With regards to, is there any limitation on numbers? Firstly, with regard to the number of cars, that seems to be a disruption in the area. And secondly, with regard to health and safety, numbers within the cabinet, the, the, uh, cabin itself. Chair, if I may. Can you answer uh, that, Andy? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's no, it's an existing B&B, so I don't know what the existing numbers are for that and what that, but that that's already in operation and so there's no control over that aspect at all. Um, in terms of the carriage, it, you know, it's, it, you know, there's no intend, intention from a planning perspective or there's nothing been recommended by officers to try and limit how many people can stay in that carriage. Um, it becomes a difficult one to enforce any conditions we impose we've got to be able to enforce and to to go out monitoring how many people are stopping in a in a in a railway carriage it would be a bit difficult if if not sort of uh, impossible to to enforce um the railway carriage you'll you'll know the size of a railway carriage if it's intended to provide sort of living room bedrooms and all that then you you'd assume i think the, the the indication is that it could hold up to two families um within that and I think, Chair, I might say at this point, I know members might still ask some further questions, but, you know, again, this could be an application that um, members might want to defer to get some more information about the turning issues. I've been to site and I'm satisfied that vehicles can turn in the driveway area subject to something being laid out and achieved by way of, you know, further details. Um, yeah. But it just depends what members want to do, really. Um, and some of the questions around, uh, you know, limiting people numbers, where well, we could potentially look at conditioning that, but I, I don't think it's a very enforceable condition. Yeah. Chair. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, Andy. Councillor Wilson. Thanks, Chair. I have toilet facilities and septic tank. How's that going to work out? Uh, do they need powder to do any of this, or are we going to get rid of human waste? <laughs> Bit of a big one, that one. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else got anything to say? Right. Well, seeing as we don't have anyone to speak on it, we've got no applicants or agent, no objectors, 
no ward councillors. So, um, the application is down to be accepted, I believe. Is that right, Andy? It is, Chair. In the and report? There was, there was a comment about suggesting a, an alternative location. Well, the red line boundary is just for this site. So, this is, you know, this is the application before members. Right. You know, so members need to consider this. If they want more information about this location and how the traffic would work, then there's an option to defer, I would suggest, Chair, um, to get that information. If members are happy, they've got enough information relative to this location, then obviously a, a decision you know, can be Just made, I guess. Right. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you very much. So we'll now open it up to the committee. Do we have any observations? Anything anybody wants to say? Councillor Coop. Thank you, Chair. I think the option to defer might be a good idea because there's a, there's a lot of questions we have. Um, maybe not against the principle of it, but I, I think there's too many questions to answer because there's nobody here from there to answer them. So I, I think it would be a good idea to uh, to defer it and, and yeah. get some answers. To it. Thank yes, you. Yes, you're, you're right, Councillor Cook. We should, we should really have some presence here who can answer yeah. these questions. Yeah. Does yeah. uh, Councillor Rostron, you were nodding your head. Are you in favour of deferring it? Yeah. yeah. Right, so is anybody against deferring it? Nobody? Are we all in favour of deferring it? Then? Just stick your hand up and we'll know. Okay, so we will defer it until such time as we can get some more information on it. Right, that's the end of the applications for today. We don't have any any further notes from Andy on on other things so um all it means is that i'm calling into the meeting i know it's been a busy two days for us really but thank you for your attendance i've appreciated it and um see you again at the next meeting so good afternoon and thank you once more thank you chair and thank you officers bye everybody thank you, chair. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.